again for the expressible gift of life and thank all of you that are with us and all of you that are checking in with us around the world. Uh, again, in Bay City, Midland, Pontiac, Detroit, Flint, Benton Harbor, uh, again, Portage, uh, Ypsilanti, Kalamazoo, Battle Creek, to all of our friends in those areas. And let's not forget, again, those uh, who are watching us in Nashville, in Washington, Kansas, Mississippi, uh, to North and South Carolina, Minnesota, uh, to all of you that are watching us, California, again, we thank Ohio, Indiana, uh, to all of that. I'm going to have to hold on to this and keep trying to get away. All right, so all of you, again, we welcome you to all of our members right here. God be praised for all that he does. A couple quick FYIs. You can see it on the screen. Uh, if we don't have your updated information, number one, we need you to help us with that. We don't know how many times you've moved. We don't know if your address has changed. We don't know if you still got the same number, et cetera, et cetera. So we do need that. Number two, the notes for uh, Bible study and for life development have been updated. And so if you would scan that QR code, you can get the most recent notes. Uh, scan that code. It will give you the most recent notes. I did email a couple individuals that I know want the notes, so check your email for that as well. Uh, be aware of that as we go forward. All right, a couple quick things to be aware of. Uh, next, uh, when is that? The weekend uh, that we're having the lectures. The 13th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Is that the weekend of the lectures? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what about, I'm talking about the lectures on depression and anxiety. Okay, there it is. October 21st. All right. Uh, you can see our guest speakers, and we certainly want to make sure we turn out in great numbers. This is our own, doing our thing, so we certainly want you to come out, be a part of that. Come here. Come here, the signs and the symptoms of people that suffer from depression and anxiety. All right. It's critical. The only thing it's going to cost you is an hour or so of your time, but the information will equip you on how to help other people in your family your neighborhood, and your community that might suffer from those two areas. Got some great presenters that's going to be here. I understand they're both excellent teachers and people that are masters of those areas. So we certainly want to make sure that we're here for that. Next weekend, next weekend, the 13th, 14th, 15th, Ministry Affirmation Day, we've got some members of our church family coming back home. You can see them on the screen. Dr. Addis Moore will be our guest speaker on, on Sunday. Uh, on Saturday, Pastor Timothy Troxler and Sister Patsy Moore uh, will be uh, some of our presenters on Saturday. And obviously on Friday, it's our hangout time, our fellowship time. For the record, just so you know, people say, well, what should we wear? It's casual. I just want you to be aware of that. It's casual. If you come, uh, you know, if you come out of work, you know. All right, so if you're coming from work, coming in, that's fine. Uh, it's a fellowship time, and there again, you know we're going to be at the BV Community Center. It starts at 6 o'clock, and so it's a great fellowship. It's a great dinner. We really want you there. Uh, we're holding, we're putting forth our best foot to make sure it's a great weekend. It's the first ministry affirmation weekend that we've ever had. So we want to make sure that we're doing all that we can, pulling out all the stops to make sure it's a great weekend. I promise you that you won't regret being a part of everything. I need you to be committed to Saturday. We're offering continental breakfast and then offering a lunch afterwards. But we need you here for all the presenters. I need you here in great numbers. Two of those individuals are here. They're part of our family. And so they were part of the originators of this ministry. So we certainly want to make sure that we're here to greet them as they come back home. All right. At the end of this month, um, we've got the Harvest Sunday going on, a harvest uh, event. That's on a Tuesday from 4 to 6. The chili cook-off cook -off is during that time. And, bro, people, you going gonna to be in the chili cook-off? You, you going to be in there or you, you don't know? Okay, all right. <laughs> All right, so we got chili cook off, and I think the brothers, I don't know, I don't think we know the brothers are, but some of them said uh, that they're willing to encourage the judges <laughs> with some dineros, some greenbacks, mucho dineros, money. 
to make sure that they win. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so there again, uh, we're going to be giving out chili that day. And if we get things together from this $5,000 grant, we hopefully will be giving out what's called Narcan kits. Narcan kits are those kits that you give people who may know individuals that, are, um, that use drugs, um, et cetera. And sometimes those people have OD. Well, a Narcan kit can bring them out of the OD. And so we'll be prepared to hand those out to people in the community and those of you that want to get trained on how we use them then we will be providing training for those. All right? So I'll let you know. October 14th, what time? October 14th, that Saturday, Continental Breakfast starts at 8.30. Lecture start at 9.30. We end at 12.30, and then we go right into lunch. It's going to be here? Or it's going to be here. Here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All the lectures will take place right here. And then, uh, again, we'll either do lunch in the fellowship hall or we'll do it over in the park depending on what the weather is and then from there we can we can do what we need to do all right all right so those are the events going on right now we pray that everything else goes well uh looking forward again starting in um november we get ready to put up trees um, and get ready for again light up the park so we'll tell you about that information once we get there all right all right. Uh, again, continue to pray for the sick and shut in. Uh, Sister, uh, who's the person that's in the hospital? Betty. Betty Walker. Back in the hospital. Let's pray for Sister Missioner's family. She joined us uh, not long ago. She was not able to complete the new membership class before she took ill and passed away. So her funeral was yesterday. And from the funeral yesterday, there were two individuals that accepted the call to accept Christ. One said he'll be here Sunday. Let's hope both show up. All right. Let's hope both show up. All right. So again, thank God for that. Uh, always about our father's business. All right. Um, the project to get the work done around the building. We've said right now the work is supposed to start. They're going to cut down trees. And then after trees are cut down and stumps are grinded, they're going to start the cement work. All right. And just kind of give you an idea, the price went up about seven grand uh, because the, the manholes have to be done and some other work. Uh, but we're going to move forward and get the work done. We don't have a choice. Got to get the work done. But that's why we need you to give. All right. And so so that Sister Ann Brown ain't got to cut a check for all of that money. Uh, we want everybody else to do y'all part. All right. Everybody do their part. If everybody do their part. Uh, we already know right now that's the main thing we're going to try to get done. At the rate we're going right now, all of the work should be done potentially by the first week in, no in November. All right? So just in FYI as we go to that, okay? So those of you that want to sow a seed that watch us week in and week out, we certainly appreciate that. Uh, again, if it's a one-time donation, again, we appreciate that. Whatever you can do, uh, we know the work has to be done. And so we appreciate you. As a five-star ministry, we know that's the cost of it. And so we're going to do all that we can, okay? All right, come on, let's open the word of prayer. Turn to God our Father for this day. We give you praise, glory, and honor. We are thankful that you are God besides you there is none other. Thank you, Lord, again for family and friends, for, for this ministry. We thank you for those that serve in leadership roles. And we thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this ministry, this beacon of light on the corner of 7th and James. Pray now that you bless each one that watches, that's connected to us around the world. May you bless them in the ministries upon which they are part of. And bless us as we continue to do the work that you've called us to do here in this city. Continue to keep your hands around our children. Uh, bless our country right now with such a political turmoil going on in the country. We pray, Father, that there again you show yourself strong. And we pray, Lord, that in the end you're being given the glory as we ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's a political storm fire right now in our country. We don't have what's called the Speaker of the House. Um, and it's amazing to me that if that is, I just say this, brother peoples, it's amazing to me that if this position is so important to this country, why would you take seven days off? Why would you go on vacation? So nothing, nothing can happen in this country for seven days. 
nothing. It's not like you didn't know this was going to happen. Because you had already been told, if he does this, we're going to do that. Why didn't you have your ducks in a row so that when it happened, somebody could get up and make a motion and another person was selected? But that's too much like, right. right. Okay. All right. Let's jump into this piece. All right, chapter, uh, for those of you that's kind of hanging out with us, page number 10. Again, thanks, Sister Redeemer and the crew last week for handling things while we were out for a minute. I certainly appreciate them and you. Uh, here we are on page number 10, chapter number 7. If you got your Bibles, I need to say this to you right up front. You're about to see what I call some uh-oh stuff. All right? And you ain't seen nothing yet. These next couple chapters are just going to blow your mind. And so we're going to spend more time just flat out looking right at the scripture and the scripture going to explain everything. All right. So the notes are there, but I'm just going to be reading right from the Bible because when you see this stuff in the Bible, it's going to blow your mind by itself. It's not going to require me to explain it. You're going to look at it and say, oh, my God, no. Oh, no. For real? Not, wow. Okay? That's what I expect. Now, if y'all don't say that, y'all going to get an eighth hour. So y'all better be saying something. All right? So here we are. Now, let me come back and make sure we got this. Uh, Yancey, at the end of the day, there are several types of judgment that God is going to render during the, what we call the season of tribulation. The three types of judgments. So does anybody know those? The first one was what? The seals. What's the other two? All right, don't be trying to cheat. Look through your paper because you ain't going to find them. I can just tell you that right now. All right, we get them. We're about to open them up in just a minute. What I've told people, and I say this again to you, is thank God that right now in this life, we see what I call the loving side of God. I'm so glad, Brother Peoples and Brother Green, I'm so glad I'm not going to be here when people see the other side of God. Okay? The other side. Because that's the side that you're going to see during the tribulation. Even though you see that, Sister Selena, you're still going to see this compassionate side of God also. You're going to see his wrath like you've never seen it before. But you're also going to see a compassionate side of him too. Okay? Now, I want to make sure we keep getting this and I'll keep saying and repeating it. We are not going to be here during the tribulation. Don't let anybody tell you we're going to be here during the tribulation and then God's going to come get us. No. God is going to rapture us. And then the tribulation starts. Okay? I want to make sure we get that. We've covered that, but I want to make sure we get it. All right? So here we are. We're in chapter number seven. We've already seen the seven seals. All right? The seven seals in chapters four, five, and six. We're now in chapter number seven. And what we begin to see is the wrath of God. Now, there are tons of scriptures, tons of scriptures, Old Testament and New, that tells people the wrath of God is coming. People have been warned since the beginning of time that God is going to come and unleash his wrath. Okay? And what I think happened at the end of the day, says many Taylor, is people just flat out choose to ignore it. They don't care. They're naive to it. Or they forgot it. At either way it go, God says, when I say something, it's going to happen. So what's happening now is we see God unleashing his wrath. So in this text, and I just want to start with uh, chapter 7. And verse 1, it says, and I saw four angels stand at the four corners of the earth. And look at what these angels are doing. They're holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land. What's the purpose of wind? It is to keep the air fresh, circulate. It continues to give you the ability so that 
you know, we don't burn up or stuff don't catch on fire. I mean, there's a lot of different motivations. They use wind now throughout the entire country to do what? Generate electricity. All right? Uh, wind helps push uh, contaminants in the air, out the air, or in such a place where they don't contaminate. I mean, you can look at wind doing a lot of things. But look at what he's saying. He says that the wind wasn't able to blow on the land or on the sea or on any tree. And then he said, then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels, watch this, who had been given power to do what? The four angels had been given the ability to harm the land and the sea. And he tells them, don't harm the land or sea or trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Okay? We're going to put a seal. Now, we're not talking about the mark of the beast. We're talking about something that identifies them as servants of the living God. Wait, don't y'all harm the earth until we put this seal on those people. All right? Y'all with me? Uh -huh. All right. And then he says this in verse 4. He says, Then I heard the number of those who were sealed. So how many is that? A hundred and what? 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. Who's not listed there? Gentiles. Because any Gentile that is saved up till now has already been raptured. What God now does, and let me ask you, anybody ever recognize that number 144,000? Have you ever heard that from anybody? Mm -hmm. Now, the Jehovah Witnesses say that only 144,000 people are going to be in heaven with God. Now, that's a straight contradiction, brother people, of when it says God is no respecter of person. Because then my question is, okay, God, out of the 8 billion people on the earth right now, not to mention all the other people since you created, what 144,000 are you going to choose? And my question is, do I even have a chance? Think about that. Let's just use the 8 billion on the earth now. How many of y'all think y'all going to be one of those 144,000? Oh, Brother Green said, yeah, you confident in that, huh, Brother Green? Brother Green said, ain't nobody, I'll put my hand up. I know I'm going to be one. Ain't nobody raising their hand. All right. 144,000. These are from the tribes of Israel. I'm with you. That's why there again you study because when you start trying to do the math, it don't add up. Okay? It doesn't add up. And so, and we're going to see that because I'm going to show it to you uh, here in the next part of this text because I want you to see it for yourself. Matter of fact, it's in verse 9. And I'm going to get there in just a second. But what I want you to understand is these are the children of Israel that make now a conscious decision during the tribulation that God can use them to witness to the entire world. Now, let's go back and understand, Reverend Cameron, God's ultimate purpose for the children of Israel was that there would be a light unto the world. Remember that? God chose them out of everybody, what? To be a light to the rest of the world. Well, even as we speak right now, understand, Sis Brown, that the children of Israel are still waiting for the Messiah. They don't think that the Messiah has come. Remember when Jesus was here, they denied Jesus. And even when Jesus did some miracles, they say, look, we can't dispute that. We've we seen that ourselves. So what we're going to do is kill them, which is what they did. All right? They killed them. But, the, but they still believe right now they're still waiting for the Messiah to come. They don't think he's come yet. All right? So therefore, the Jews don't endorse the New Testament. Because the New Testament is what? The testament of Jesus being born, living, dying, and getting up as Messiah. So they don't endorse the New Testament. They only endorse the Old. And the, what is the Old telling them? In every book in the Old Testament, it says the Messiah is coming. 
In Genesis, it says he's here. Jesus said, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son. It didn't say God is thinking about sending him. He said God sent him, which means what? That he has sent him, that he has already come. Okay? All right. So you can see in verse number five, six, seven, and eight, you can see all the tribes. The one you don't see is the tribe of Dan. And you don't see the tribe of Dan because it is perceived that because there were so many sins within that tribe, God chose not to select them to be witnesses on his behalf. All right? That's just, and I can't, I can't draw that stuff out of there now. Uh, Leviticus 24, 11, Judges chapter 18, 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 28 through 29, you'll see some of the scriptures that great relate to the tribe of Dan. Now watch verse number 9. In verse 9, it says this. It says, after this, I looked, and lo, a great multitude. Watch this. Which no man could number. Y'all see that? Of all nations. Does that answer your question? Kindred. And people. And tongues. Okay, they stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in the hand. Is that us? No. Because remember, we've been already raptured. All right. Notice what these people do. They're clothed with robes and palms, palms in their hands. And look at what they say. All right. And they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. They're identifying God and Jesus connected together. This is not the group, this tribe, this, this multitude, this is not the group that is us. These are people that during the tribulation, they acknowledge Jesus as Lord. Now, let's make sure we get this as many Taylor. During the tribulation, let me ask you a question. Where the Holy Ghost going to be? Anybody know? Well, where is he at now? Is he at Macy's? Is he at Rallies? Where, where is that? Is he at the Civic Center? Is he at the bank? Is he at Myers? Is he at Walmart? Where the Holy Ghost at now? Huh? Where is he at? Oh, he's in you. So, says Meekin, let me ask you a question. If he in us, when we leave, where he going to be? If he in us. Oh, yeah, he with us. See, what's going to happen during the tribulation period is people are no longer going to be able to call on the name of Jesus. They're going to have to specifically mention God's name. Because Jesus' role was to get us to God, and they still rejected God. Now, I'm telling you right now, when we get to chapter 9, if we get there tonight, some of the stuff, chapter 8, chapter 7, it's going to blow your mind about how crazy these folks are. All right? They cannot call on the name of Jesus. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is not here to open their minds up to the fact that Jesus is the Savior of the world. That make sense? What's the Holy Ghost's job? He is called the revelator. What is his job? To open our eyes to know that we need Jesus Christ. Okay? The only way you know Jesus is if he opened your eyes. That's why it's called revelation. The Holy Ghost is called the author of revelation, which means he's also called the author of life. Which means until he opens your eyes to know who Jesus Christ is, you don't have life. Without him telling you you need Jesus Christ, you're going to continue to be lost. That's his role in our, in our lives. Okay? So when he's gone, who's here? Nobody. Nobody. Because his job is to tell you, reveal to you, you need Jesus. So the only person left is the very person mankind started out rejecting which is who? God. Remember they rejected him. Remember the book of Judges? Give us somebody that looked like us. God said, okay, I'll give you somebody. He said, but I can tell you right now, 
Uh, he's going to make your boys slaves, and he's going to rape all your daughters and do all this stuff. They said, okay. Is that not what happened? Yeah. They'd have a good king and a bad king. Good king, bad king. Okay? Because man, God said, give them what they want, but they're going to regret it in the end. All right? Let's push through some stuff. All right? Uh, again, look at verse 11. And in verse 11, he says this. He said, and all the angels standing around the throne... And around the elders and the four living creatures, remember we talked about them in chapter 4, a little bit of 3 in chapter 5. They all fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory, and worship and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? In case you're still trying to figure out who that multitude is, you say, look, these are they that are come out of what? The great what? Tribulation. All right? And have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. I want you to get, again, the key word there, B-L-O-O-D. The power of the blood. All right? There's power. Power. Wonder working power in what? I know it was. What can wash away all my sins? Nothing but the blood. the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It shall never lose its power. Right. Remember now, the blood is the most critical thing that we have, the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood has life. And we know that because when Abel, a Cain slew Abel, what did God say? His blood cries out to me. His blood. There is life in the blood. Remember this, if you will, says Thomas, that when we were first created, what were we eating? Anybody remember? When we was in the garden, was it ribs? No. Was it Raymond noodles? No. Was it government cheese? No. What was it? McDonald's? No. Chee cheese? Okay. In the garden... We ain't going to pour no chicken off the tree and ate it cooked. It wasn't done. Wasn't no neck bones. Nah, it wasn't no tacos in there. God said you can eat from any of these trees. What grown trees? Fruits. God said, okay. But now notice now what happens is that when mankind sinned and God said, okay, now I'm going to curse the earth. I'm kicking you out of the garden, and I'm going to protect you from getting back in the garden by putting a sword or a cherub at the gate so you can't get back in because you didn't already prove I can't trust you. All right? They ate from the tree of the knowledge of what? Good and evil. He did not want them to eat from the tree of life or else they would have lived forever. But they would have lived forever in a sinful body. Because remember now, when they sinned, they changed everything. They went from perfection to imperfection. They didn't even know they were naked. I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> they didn't even know they were naked. They didn't know it until after they ate that tree, ate that fruit. And then the Bible says, and they realized they had no clothes on. Maybe they had glasses. I don't know. I don't know. Sister Thomas, that ain't funny, Sister Thomas. <laughs> you know? All right? And so what happens is God kicked him out and said, okay, now, now why is this critical? And I'm going to talk to you in just a minute. God says, okay, now, curse is the earth. The earth is not going to yield what it used to before you did before you sinned. You're going to ha literally have to work for what you want in life. Why do you think God says if a man will not work? Neither shall he eat. Why is God telling us we've got to work the ground? Because he designed it so that from the ground, from the labor of our hands, we can now sustain ourselves. Okay? So in this outline, he says this. He says, there again, these are they that came out of the great tribulation. So it's not us. Because we've already been what? Raptured already. Okay? These are people... That literally, during the first set of uh, judgments, those seals, they all died in. 
How many people died then at first from the minute God took us until now? He said it was a number so great you couldn't number it. Okay? Just keep that in mind. Now watch this. Next verse. Verse 15 says there, he says in verse 13, he said, therefore, he says, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. All right, keep going. Watch what he says. They shall never what? Hunger no more, neither what? All right, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. Keep going, watch this. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. Wait a minute, that sounds like the 23rd number song. The Lord is my shepherd. All right, and then... He says, here it is, there again, and God shall wipe away what? All their tears. Doesn't that sound like Revelation 21 and 4? Where it says, and it shall wipe away all their tears, and there'll be no more dying and no more crying. That's what he's saying just right here. All right? Keep going. Let's see if we can kind of get us through this. So that's the end of chapter 7. Now, here comes Reverend Cameron, what I call the uh-oh, look out chapter. I hope you write that in your notes, Sister Thomas, because you, and don't be getting scared and keep no nightlight on and nothing like that. <laughs> All right, here comes the chapter. Don't be calling Sister Barbara in the middle of the night. Watch this. Watch this, Brother Anthony. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half hour. I'm trying to figure out, Sister Selena, what. What he had, like a, what them things called, hourglass? What he do, like look at that and see what time it was and just turned it over? I don't, I don't know, says yes. I'm trying to figure out what type of watch because he ain't had no Rolex. Somehow, John figured out that it was a half hour. All right? Now, what I would need you to see is God is making preparation for now what we call the second wave of judgment. And what I want you to begin to see in chapter 8 and chapter 9 is going to really just blow your mind. There is no substitute for what you're going to see in Scripture. That's why I'm just going to flat out deal with Scripture so you can see it. Look at verse number two. He says, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and they were given seven trumpets. The first judgment was what? Seven what? Seals. The next wave of judgment is called the seven trumpets. Now watch this. Keep going. He says, and another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the altar. People still praying. All right. They're still praying. All right. Saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. People still praying at this point. Keep going. Watch this. And the smoke and all the and the smoke of the incense which came up with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angels' hands. We know that when we pray, it becomes a sweet savor in the nostrils of God. Now watch this. And the angel took the censer. And filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it down on the earth. All right? And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and came an earthquake. Now, let me pause, put the kickstand down. One of the things I think we need to understand is, remember this about the earth. And I, while you're doing this, I want you to go to um, Romans chapter number 8. And start with verse 18. Let's look at that. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. I'm going to read down through, I want to say verse 22. One of the things I need you to understand is when mankind sinned, I said this earlier, but I want to say it again, God cursed the earth. So the earth went from a state of perfection to imperfection. So in Tatum's theology, notice I say Tatum, it now makes sense to me while this earth is messed up. It makes sense to me why, why, and remember now, when the earth was in a state of perfection, man only lives on what? Less than 20% of the earth, give or take. Okay. The rest of the earth is covered by what? 
water that we cannot drink. All right? But when we look at a state of perfection, understand that when God first created it, the waters from the sea didn't come on the earth because they were designed by God to stay where? Where he put them. All right? Now what do we see happening with the sea? What's happening? Hurricanes? Tsunamis? Floods? Because there are no restrictions and because the earth is now in a flawed state, the rules of governance no longer exist to them. So the earth does what it wants to do. Why do you think we got tornadoes? They say the earth is the hottest right now it has ever been. All right? Why do you think there's earthquakes? Why do you think there's famines? Okay? Because the earth is not under its state of perfection, but it is, and you'll see it. Y'all got, okay, let's look at it. Watch this. Uh, Romans 8, 18 says, For I reckon that sufferings of this present age, or present time, are not uh, worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. Now, I want you to see what's happening with the earth. Watch this. Keep going. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Keep going. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Now, watch this verse. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. One more verse. Let's see if this is it. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in, in pain together until now. What is he saying? The earth is reeling and rocking, waiting to be returned to a state of what? Of perfection. That's why the earth is doing what it does now. It is no longer in a state of perfection. As a matter of fact, the earth is in complete decay mode. That's why you see all the stuff happening around the world now. Mudslides and earthquakes and all this other stuff going on, the earth is in a state of decay. So therefore, it no longer holds the state of perfection that it was in when God first created. Why? Because God cursed it. All right? So in Tatum's theology... It makes sense why the earth is doing what it does. Grass or farm that's supposed to, it ain't doing it anymore. All right? Even the creation is not acting in accordance to its original design. God didn't create uh, grasshoppers to eat up everything. Everything is acting out of sequence now. All right? You ain't never see no bears come in and walk through a grocery market like some of them doing right now. You ain't never seen no deer jump through no window or jump through a person's house. They ain't never had before because everything is acting out of sequence. That was not the way it was designed. All right, let me see. Do you got one more verse there? Let me see that. Put, put one more up. Let me see if it'll help us. Okay. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. We're waiting. Whether you know it or not, this is decaying every day. I don't care how much Botox. I don't care how much weave and how much color you put in your hair. I don't care how many, uh, what them things here? What they call? Huh? Dentures or what's the other stuff? Veneers. It's another one where they screw the tooth in and it's in there forever. That's veneers. Oh, okay. Don't matter how much you do that. Implants. Implants. Okay, whatever it is. Y'all got it. No matter how much. Now, I'm not telling you you don't look good with that stuff. I'm telling you the body is decaying every day. All right? Y'all remember when y'all were 20? When y'all could stay up all night and still go to work the next day? Some of y'all in the bed by 730 now. Can't wait to get in that bed. All right? All right. That's the, way, that's the way life is. All right. The body has reached a point now where it is in decay mode. This body, 
This, this here, this clay, is wasting away every day. The heart is not longer doing what it should. Things are clogging up. God forbid that it is. Okay? Mine is not as sharp and crisp as it used to be. All right? You used to be able to cut them nails and they be back out the next day. <laughs> yeah, uh. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah Lord. <laughs> it's stuck and chain. You'd be able to comb your hair and it'd all be there and wouldn't none be in that brush. Not all of it in the brush now. Huh? Half of it on the ground. And wish we could just pick it up and stick it back up there, but it don't work like that no more. It's, it's amazing. Sometimes when people die and they be laying and say, what, is that here? You know, because sometimes, you know, the way we dress people up now, we dress them up like they look 40 years ago. Right, that's not them. Okay? Let's keep going. Won't you go back to the text? Let's go back. All right? Uh, go to verse 7. Because what has happened in the first six verses is the earth is getting ready now for what I call the uh oh. So, so go to uh, Revelation chapter uh, number 8 and verse 7. It says, The first angel. And I'm just going to lay it out there so you can see it. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood. And look at this. And it was hurled down upon the earth. The first angel threw that down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up. A third of the grass that you didn't pay all that money to get manicured, and you pay for them folks to come in and spray your lawn, a third of that got burned up. And all the and then it tells us all the trees were burned, a third of the trees. Now imagine the earth, and literally one third of the earth has been burned up. That's what's happened with this first angel. Second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. Okay? And a third of the sea turned into blood. Wait a minute. Didn't that happen once before? When somebody touched the water and it turned into blood? Who, who was that? Oh, that was Moses and the Nile. Remember he touched it and it turned into blood? Y'all remember that? Hmm, interesting. A huge rock hits the water, instantly turns into blood, and look at what happens. A third of the living creatures, all the catfish, mm, 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 mm. all the snapper. All the scrimps and all the, it's probably going to be them four and some lobster. They all died. I ain't talking about the squid and the octopus and all that other stuff out there. The first probably going to survive. It's just the other ones that ain't going to make it. Look at what he says now. And notice now, God doesn't take them away. He says a third of, uh, watch, watch this, a third of all the living creatures in the sea. That means everything we recognize and don't recognize die. He doesn't take them away, which means that when they die, what happens to fish when they die? They come to the top. So now a third of all the creatures in the sea have died and their bodies have come to the top. So now you got that stench over all of the sea that we got to contend with. And get this now, it says, and a third of all the ships, that's all those submarines, that's all the ships, all the boats that's in the sea, a third of them crash. They get destroyed, which means there are countless lives that are dealt with or that die. All right, watch this. Verse 10, the third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky. Hmm, don't that look familiar? Anybody saw any pictures like that where a meteor come out and look like it's going to destroy the earth? I wonder where they got that stuff from. I wonder where they got. I wonder where they got. I, I wonder where they got that stuff from. Where do you think they got that from? Huh? Y'all ain't going to say it? Oh, thank you. All right. All right. I, just, I want you to know all these creatures and stuff, they ain't make that stuff up. They got the stuff out the Bible. They got our book of Revelation. It told you about them four beasts that got eyes all over. What? Where do you think they get that stuff from? Out the Bible. All right. Now watch this. I want you to see this in the text because some of y'all are going to be mad because watch this. Let me just show it to you. All right. 
He says this, a great star from heaven burning as if it were a lamp, and it fell upon a third of the rivers and upon the fountains of the water. Wait a minute, hold up. Now, we just saw where a great big rock hit the sea. Now, what's the difference between verse, verse 9 and verse 10? We don't drink seawater. What we drink? Tap water, which comes from where? Rivers and streams. That's why some of y'all are going to be mad. Y'all be drinking all that specialized water. I, y'all don't drink water out the tap. I drink special water. It ain't going to be around. Of course, you ain't got to worry about that anyway because you're going to be gone. All right. But watch this now, Sister Ann Brown. Watch this. He says in verse number 11, he says, the name of the star. A star fell out of heaven into the water, and look at what happens. He says the name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. They still drank them. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Wasn't there a situation where there was water bitter and one of the prophets threw a, a stick in there and it became sweet? So it's not like we don't know this stuff, all right? But a lot of people died because what? They drank the bitter water or they died of what? They died of thirst, all right? Here's the fourth one, verse 12. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and watch this. A third of the sun was struck. A third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light and a third and also a third of the night. So what I need to understand is the earth consists of two what? Two lights. Even the darkness, according to Genesis, is a form of light. What they're saying is that the moon is going to be hit, the stars are going to be hit, and the sun is going to be hit. And during the course of the day, for a third of the day, it's going to be completely black. Wait a minute. Doesn't that sound familiar? Didn't that happen before? We know of at least two instances where something like that happened before, right? Remember during Moses' time? The sun didn't shine, I think it was, for a period of time. What's the other time something like that happened? I, my neck going to start hurting in a minute. I hope y'all get the hint. On Calvary, what happened? For a period of time, it was dark. For a period of hours. The whole earth got dark, okay, where people couldn't see anything. Because at that time, God could not look upon his son that was bearing the sin of the world. God can't look on sin, okay? So watch this. Now, watch this, brother, people, because this is going to blow your mind. In verse 13. Now, understand, in verse 12, a third of the earth is dark at night. A third of the day is dark. We don't know when. It could be early in the morning. It could be at noon. And we don't know if it's eight hours. We don't know if it's six hours. But the earth is going to be completely black where you can't see nothing. Can you imagine not being able to see your hand? Not being able to see anybody? Just kind of walking and touching, bumping into people, bumping into things. All this. You can't see nothing because it's completely black. All right, watch this verse, verse 13. And, and I watched, and I heard an eagle flying through the midst of heaven. Watch this, saying with a loud voice. He must got a microphone. Because what does he say? What does he say? How many times does he say it? Don't y'all miss that? Because them woes mean something. Now watch this now, Sister Lena. He says to the inhabitants of the earth, here this, here this angel, this eagle is in heaven saying, whoa, 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 but the people on the earth can hear him. That's some type of eagle. 
that the people on the earth could hear in ego, which means the ego has the ability to do what? He just gave what? Three what? Three words. Egos don't talk. But here's an ego that's doing what? He's speaking in language we understand. All right? And watch this. He says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Listen at his warning right here. He says, he says, watch this, because of the trumpet blasts which are about to be sounded by the other. He said, look, y'all ain't seen nothing yet. You think you, didn't see, you ain't seen nothing? Now watch this. I want you to see it in chapter number nine because some of y'all ain't going to believe it. That's why you need to see it. Chapter nine, watch this. He said, look, whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, because when these next three angels come, you ain't seen nothing. So watch this. He says, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him, watch this, was given the key of the bottomless pit, this angel. Keep going. Watch this. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air was darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. It's so black that you can't see nothing because of the smoke that's coming out of this bottomless pit. Now watch what go, watch this. Watch the next verse. And there came out of the smoke locusts, grasshoppers upon the earth. And listen at this now, says Minnie Taylor. Uh, and unto them. Unto who? Unto them. Who is the them? Brother Anthony, who's, who's the them? It says, and out of the, and there came out of the smoke, who? Locusts. Upon what? The earth. And unto them. Who's the them? The locusts was given power. Grasshoppers were given power. Y'all see that? As the scorpions of the earth have power. We know that when a scorpion sting you, he got some power. Grasshoppers, which are innocent and nothing, now have power. Now watch this. I'm going to let you see it in the next verse. All right? Don't y'all be getting scared either. <laughs> and it was commanded them that, listen at this here. This is what blew my mind. Says, yeah. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth nor any green thing, nor any tree. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Y'all get that? God said, no, don't, don't mess with no tree, don't mess with no grass. Don't, don't mess with anything. All I want you to do is put some pain on the people that don't have the seal on their foreheads. Y'all see that? Y'all with me? All right. Now watch verse 5. Verse 5, it says, and, it, and to them it was given that they shouldn't kill him. Mm, 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 mm. Watch this, says Meekin. But that they should be tormented how long? Five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion which striketh a man. God gave locusts permission for five months to torment people that did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Y'all see that? All right. He said, don't kill them, but torment them. Now watch this, Mother O'Neill, in verse number six, because some of y'all, y'all ain't said nothing yet. Maybe verse six and make it. And in those days, men should, men shall men seek death but they're not going to be able to find it. And they're going to want to die and death shall flee from them. They're going to wish they could die, but death ain't going to take them. <laughs> Y'all see it? Now watch this now. Watch verse 7. Now, now that we know what's going to happen, this is the part that tripped me out, brother people. Watch this. And the shapes of the locusts was like horses. Prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it crowns like gold. Wait a minute, hold up. 
Can y'all even imagine this? All right? This is the part that blew my mind. And their faces were like the faces of men. Wait a minute now. What the what? Now watch verse, because some of y'all ladies might get mad at verse, at verse 8. Watch this. And they had hair. <laughs> as the hair of women. And their teeth as the teeth. Wait a minute, hold up. Are we talking about locusts, grasshoppers? <laughs> y'all getting this? And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Watch, watch the next verse. Because some of y'all, watch this. I, I had it after this. I could have just dropped the mic. And they had on breastplates. As it were, breastplates of iron. And the sounds of their wings were as the sounds of chariots of many horses running into battle. Mm, mm, mm. Now, let's look at the next verse. I want you all to see it. Watch this. And they had tails like unto scorpions. What is this? And, they, and, and there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men for five months. All I can tell you, thank you, Jesus, I ain't going to be here. All I can, and this is why we need to be telling other people. What I would suggest that you do is copy chapter 8 and 9 and say, here, read this and then call me afterwards. Because when people read this, it's going to trip them out. All right? Now watch this. I want you to go a step further. Look at the next verse. And they had a king over them. Talking about locusts now which is the angel of the bottomless pit. The angel was their king, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue had this name Apollon. Keep going. Watch this so you can see it. One woe is past, and behold, there come two more woes after them. Didn't that eagle say, whoa, whoa, whoa? Yeah. You ain't seen nothing yet? These other three angels, when they come, Y'all see that? That's enough right there. I don't know what else to tell you. All I can tell you is thank you, I ain't going to be here. And listen, I, uh, we don't have to know everything all these symbols mean. Just looking at it from a human perspective, I'm scared enough right now. This is plain enough for me to understand. I don't want to be here during this time. I don't want to see no locusts that got the face of a man. <laughs> I, I got teeth like a lion and got a tail. Like, I, I don't even want to see something like that. I think somebody, I, I'm going to see if I can bring it next week. Somebody, um, somebody do, uh, some, it's not on here. Somebody drew an imitation of what they thought it looked like. I'm going to try to find that picture and show it to you next week. That, look, that made me scared. A grasshopper with a crown on his head and got hair like women. I don't know if it was weave or just, I don't know. It said it got hair, bro, people. All right? Got teeth like a lion. No, got a breastplate on. A, a grasshopper? Now, here's my question, Sister Minnie Taylor. Is it a small grasshopper or is it a grasshopper about the size of man? And I know what y'all saying, Reverend. If I was here, I'd stay in my house. Well, I, let me tell you right now. I don't care how secure your house is. They're going to find. How do you think roaches get in? They'll just knock on the door. Hey, let me come in. Roaches find a way in. You don't think they, yeah, mice find a way in? All that stuff. You don't think they're going to find, figure out a way to get in? They're going to, look, if they got power, they can figure a way. He said, well, you know, Reverend, I'm going to live in one of those uh, silos. Remember now, the earth is in a state of decay. So even those silos that people are living in right now, they got bowling alleys and movie theaters and people live like a mile below the ground. That's the, when, when this earth started being shaken up, I feel sorry for them. They think they're going to be safe. What they don't know is the earth is going to start shaking uncontrollably and all that stuff is going to be destroyed. 
that's just Tatum's theology right there, okay? All right? And I don't care how much food you done got stored up. That ain't going to save you. I, here's the thing you need to see. You can stay down in that silo all you want. The Bible says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. You stand there, but that earth going to be destroyed. We didn't already seen where a third of it's destroyed already. And we haven't even gotten finished. The second woe is coming. So I just want to challenge you to look at the second woe. Um, and we're going to come back and look at that. Well, let me read a little bit. Let me just kind of read this so y'all can get this. All right. Uh, can you give me 13? Y'all give me about two minutes. Let me see if I can get through. Here come the sixth angel. And he sounded his trumpet. And look at this. He, John saying, I heard a voice uh, coming from the horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels, watch this, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year to do what? Slay what? A third part of men. Let's just do some math. Let's, the earth right now has 8 billion people. And we know a bunch of them already died because we said a multitude already died. Right? So let's just say the earth went from 8 billion down to 5 billion. Let's just say that for the sake of argument. He says a third part of men. So what is a third of 5 billion? Like 1.5, 1.8? These four angels slay a third part of men. Now, we know, according to the Bible, that one angel went through a camp and slew 185,000. Y'all remember that in the Old Testament? He go four angels killing a third of all men on the face of the earth. Even the lowest angel in heaven got more power than all the earth does based on what we see right here. All right? Now, he gives you the number of how many, and look at this. Look at the next verse, verse 16, and we'll stop right there. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200 thousand thousand and I heard the number of them John say I heard it all right y'all see that 200 million is what he's saying and I'm gonna stop right there and we pick up same bat channel same bat station next week all right I told you this stuff gonna blow your mind all right, you sitting there like, no, that can't be true. God said this, not Tatum. And like I said, you don't need, a, uh, you know, what we call a, a, uh, a theologian per se to come in and tell you what happened. You, this is in plain English. It's enough where you can understand it. For you. I know your mind said, no, I don't believe that. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't going to be here anyway. I'm gone. So even if this ain't... Even if my interpretation of it ain't accurate, I don't plan to be here anyway. He said some people going to die. He said a grasshopper going to come with some, with some hair. Is it going to be dreadlocks? Is it going to be blonde hair? Is it going to be black hair? What is it going to be? Is it going to be a weave? Is it going to be gray hair? Is it going to be a red hair? I, what, I, it don't matter to me. I ain't going to be here. And the good news is you ain't going to be here unless you ain't saved. And if you ain't saved, you better hurry up. And tell the Lord, right, Lord, I need to be saved right now. I don't plan to be for this stuff. All right? That's for all of you, too. All right? Questions? What we cover? I'm going home and read some more. I hope you will, too. All right? Don't take a rocket sign to see what's going on in chapters 8 and 9. This stuff is so self-explanatory. It just blows your mind. Now, don't y'all go and be fighting no locusts in y'all sleep. I can already tell right now. All right?
Yes, ma'am. I mean, it ain't nothing to play with. I told you how the book of Revelation was going to rock your world and change your mind. These two, when he said, whoa, 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 he wasn't playing. We just seen one whoa. Imagine what's going to happen in the next whoa. And you can find out. Just read ahead. All right? All right, don't forget to invite somebody to church on Sunday. Don't forget executive team. We got a meeting over the weekend. Make sure you look at the calendar so we know what's going on with that. Just want to remind you of that. Keep praying for the church. Keep praying for the church members. Keep praying for our schools. You saw last night uh, Morgan State University. There was a shooting. Uh, to my knowledge, nobody was killed, but five people were injured, and the suspect is still on the loose. Okay? Suspect was still on the loose. So there again, let's pray. Um, interesting. What's the guy's name? We were sitting in there watching the news earlier. What's his name on CNN? Can't think of his name. But what he tell, told us, he said, thus far this year, there's been 5,100, I think, and 31 shootings. Jake Tapper. Jake Tapper. In this country. 58 shootings have happened in schools. Okay? And I forgot the number of people that have died. The only country on the face of the planet where you got shootings like that. I know what they're saying. What's the amendment? Is it the second amendment? Have you ever read the full amendment? Because the full amendment says the right to bear arms during the time of war. It says I got the right to bear firearms. Just read it. Go Google it. The Second Amendment. Read that whole amendment and tell me what you think it says. Now, I'm not telling you you don't have a right to have a gun. But the amendment was put in there to say, I got a right to defend myself in the time of war. Why you need 16 guns? Why you need a gun that when you fire it, it fires 50 rounds in a matter of 60 seconds? What animal you going to kill in any piece of the meat left when you shoot it with a gun like that? Does that make sense? I didn't think it did. All right, come on, let's stand to our feet so we can be dismissed. Dean Roscoe, you want to get in the van, you're taking us all to, to Chili's, right? Okay, all right. Y'all heard that? <laughs> all right. All right, come on, let's pray. God, our Father, again, for this day, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord, again for uh, blessing us. Thank you, Lord, as we sit here in awe, as we read these chapters, our eyes, our mind uh, is wrapping or, or gripping what you've said in your word, these tantalizing pages that share with us uh, the judgment, your wrath that's going to be poured out on man. It humbles us. Uh, we stand in fear but not fear of you, but in fear or reverence of you because we see another side of you that we've never seen before. Now, Father, we pray that we use this information now to witness, to evangelize, to share with others, to encourage others to live the life you've called us to live. Give us traveling grace as we leave this place. We pray for our country right now and our world as we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, Lord willing, see you Sunday morning.